With the patient sedated and after inserting the trocar through the vaginal wall posteriorly into the cul-de-sac, your first landmark is a posterior wall of the uterus, which is revealed in the upper half of the screen. Normal saline is used to navigate the 30 degree, 2.9 millimeter hysteroscope through the pelvic structures. In this case, we started by surveying the right hand side, looking at the right tube and ovary with special attention to the ovarian fossa, the ovarian surfaces, and the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube. During our survey, peritubal and periovarian adhesions were encountered. You can observe the different vascular pattern of the fallopian tube compared to that of the small bowel. One can also perform fimbrioscopy going through the distal tube and observing the health of the tubal mucosa. You can now see the methylene blue dye coming through when injected transcervically at the same time. You can also see the methylene blue dye that had come from the left fallopian tube, confirming tubal patency bilaterally. Here you can see the pelvic sidewall with the uterine artery and ureter seen transperitoneally. To complete the survey of the pelvis, one has to come down and examine the peritoneal surfaces of the cul-de-sac and pararectal areas. As is evident in the clip, you can see superficial endometriotic implants in the left pararectal area and extending to the pelvic sidewall. It is important to note the different orientation approaching the pelvis from below, the opposite direction compared to conventional laparoscopy. The examination should always be done in a systematic way, starting at the midline, identifying the posterior surface of the uterus, moving towards the right side, following the right tube and ovary, all along, repeating the same on the left-hand side, looking at the pelvic side walls, and finally looking at the pararectal area and cul-de-sac. Limited operative intervention is also possible by dividing adhesions or ablating surface endometriosis. This is not shown in this video. At the end of the procedure, the scope is withdrawn and the pelvic fluid is drained and the patient is sent to recovery shortly thereafter.